Discretion is not the watchword of the British forces in Belize. There are just four Harrier fighters, but they make the British presence a very public one. From their base next to the country's international airport, they fly five or six sorties a day. Either in tropical rainstorms or more often in sweltering heat, the ground crews work in the open air. The Harriers are hidden from prying eyes behind steel reinforcements topped with camouflage nets called hides. Paul Phillips, from born in Lincolnshire, came here from the home of the Harrier, RAF Wittering. It's a harder job. Um, you're on the go all the time while the jets are flying. Um, whereas back at base, Wittering, um, places like uh, the hangar, you know, it's, it's a much more relaxed uh, environment. But here you're sort of uh, in the front line, so to speak. So you, the work is uh, much more physical. The British are in Belize to protect it from neighbouring Guatemala, which has always claimed the territory. Recently, there have been more peaceful overtures from across the border, but for now, the forces remain. Although the RAF Harriers may be the most visible and audible sign that the British are here, the RAF's role is to support the army. The British garrison is commanded by an army brigadier, Christopher Elliott, with an Air Force Group captain, Roger Wedge, as his deputy. In the event of a war, it would be the army calling the shots. But the army would turn immediately to the aging GR3 Harriers with their formidable firepower commanded by Wing Commander David Horwood, formerly at Wittering with No. 1 Squadron. We're here to support the Army on the ground in close air support matters, and also we have the ability, uh, should the need ever arise, to uh, take the war across the border. The Harriers would back up the frontline soldiers by attacking enemy positions, acting on intelligence from troops on the ground. Each week, the aircraft are armed with live ammunition and flown to one of the bombing ranges in the jungle or scrubland. Perched on a 30-foot scaffold tower under the supervision of an RAF forward air controller, Army officers learn how to guide the Harriers to their targets. Two, clear life. That was uh, one o'clock, uh, 25 to 30 metres, just in the tree line. Troops on the ground are not the only target spotters. The Army Air Corps maintains three gazelle helicopters in Belize. Unarmed but able to fly low and fast over jungle and swamp, the gazelles would be in the front line of the battle. Because we're airborne, we can see a lot more than somebody on the ground, and particularly in this sort of terrain where there's jungle in the way. The aircraft can get into a position to see a particular target. Most of the pilots are trained to be forward air controllers, i.e. telling uh, Harriers where to drop their bomb and most of them uh, are trained as artillery observers as well. The British garrison in Belize is made up of 1,600 servicemen, including 600 frontline troops from the King's Own Royal Border Regiment and the four Harrier fighter aircraft. It may not seem a sizeable force, but perhaps the greatest defence against any invasion from Guatemala is this, the dense tropical rainforest which makes up much of the border between the two countries. Every week, soldiers are sent out into the jungle on foot patrol for up to seven days at a time. There's only one way in and one way out for the foot patrol's helicopter. The airlift of troops and equipment falls on four RAF Pumas, the workhorse of RAF Belize. They fly weekly supply trips to jungle observation posts where soldiers watch across the Guatemalan border for any sign of a military build-up. The Pumas also provide other essential services. Our other roles are uh, search and rescue for the Harrier boys who are flying around if they bang out into the jungle or the sea. We have a winch fitted so we can go and pick them up. And thirdly, and probably most importantly, we are operate a search and rescue facility for local people who are injured or ill, and we bring them back here to the force hospital. What's it like flying out here in these conditions? Well, it's hot and it's very sweaty. We drink a lot. The crew will probably put away a gallon in a day's flying. Um, and it can be quite tiring, but otherwise we enjoy it. The climate provides the biggest challenge to the troops in peacetime. Even in sealed containers, aircraft cannon shells rust in the high humidity. For the airmen who live and work with the Harriers, facilities to cool off in are limited to the reserve water supply. The humidity is the thing that kills you because you can't sweat and the sweat can't evaporate, so you can't cool down. Despite the working conditions, few servicemen would argue that Belize is an unpleasant posting. The Harriers only fly Monday to Friday. The weekends are free for the airmen to see the sights of Belize and other Central American countries. 
by far the most popular destination, the Keys, a chain of Caribbean islands just off the Belize coast. We try to encourage them to sort of make full use of uh, not just the facilities, but the opportunities that are available out here. Um, you know, obviously they can go diving out on the Keys, um, visit various countries that they perhaps wouldn't have been able to visit from the UK. Um, but the main thing is to keep them occupied, uh, you know, because they're away from home and lads like to be occupied. It's now 10 years since Belize, formerly British Honduras, became independent. There may be cutbacks elsewhere, the sun has yet to set on this British military outpost. Tomorrow in Central News, we look at how Belize is clamping down on the cocaine cartels. We talk to the RAF pilot in the front line of the drugs war and hear the arguments for Britain continuing its military presence in Belize.